Google's Chromium is what pretty much all browsers are built on. If you're using a browser, it's likely based on Chromium, or it's a Firefox fork, and Firefox is largely funded by Google. However, there has been steady work on a new browser that is not Chromium based, nor is it another Firefox fork. No. It is an entirely new browser slash browser engine written from scratch called Ladybird. Ladybird is a weird word. I prefer to call them ladybugs because they're bugs and not birds. But Ladybird sounds more elegant, so I'm glad they chose that over Ladybug. I learned about the project a number of months ago and decided to take a look. I cloned the repo and built it, which took a very long time. After it finally finished building, I opened some websites and was fairly underwhelmed. My website had some layout issues and YouTube took forever to load. But this was not surprising, since the project was, and is, still quite young. Modern browsers are ridiculously complicated, which I think is kinda dumb. The web should be a place for sharing simple documents and goofy personal websites instead of the bloated AI-dominated mess which it's become. To be fair though, I'm pretty glad YouTube and Stack Overflow exist. The world would be a very different place without the easy access to knowledge which these services provide. So maybe I'm fantasizing too much on how I imagine the old days to be. Anyway, the developers know that Ladybird is not even nearly ready, which is why they don't release binaries yet. They're targeting summer 2026 for the release of the first super extra early alpha version. It might not even have Windows support by then for all you Windows suckers, though apparently the community contributors have made some good progress on Windows support. I came back to take a look at Ladybird again just recently and found that the layout issues on my website were fixed. It also seemed to have have better performance, though still not great. I noticed that the cursor didn't show up in empty input boxes, and it looked ugly and blurry. So I decided to attempt a fix. This should be easy, I thought to myself. As always, it was not easy. Ladybird is written in my old frenemy C++, but will slowly migrate to Swift apparently, which is an interesting choice. I'm familiar with C++ thanks to my previous project. Things started well, when I only had to change one line of code to make the cursor appear less blurry, but it only got harder from there. The cursor gets rendered in paintablebox.c++ paint cursor if needed, which gets called by paint text fragment. The reason the cursor wasn't appearing was because empty input boxes didn't have text in them, and since the cursor only gets rendered by text fragments, there was nothing to render the cursor. The simplest and most obvious fix would be to insert an empty text fragment when there is no text, which is exactly what I did. And it worked, mostly anyway. I just need to insert the empty text fragment before the placeholder text so that it doesn't show up in the middle of nowhere. After spending quite a few days debugging this, I discovered that the input box consists of two text elements, one for the placeholder text and another for the inner text. I just needed to get the inner text to come before the placeholder text so that the cursor doesn't show up in the middle of nowhere. After moving these lines up, I had it almost working. At least, it was working for input boxes, not for text areas. Another few days of painful debugging, and I found that the inner text element on text areas was being set to display none when the placeholder was visible. I changed this and got it working for the text areas. There were some other minor style changes I had to make to have the placeholder text behave itself, but this was relatively easy. So contributing to Ladybird isn't easy, but it's not too hard either, and it's rewarding. I'm sure it's a lot easier than contributing to Chromium. One of the goals of Ladybird is to be able to sustain itself with a small team, surviving by donations. It aims to be entirely independent. Andreas Kling is right. Instead of using antitrust lawsuits to request that the government go beat up Google, let's just start building something better. This is a great vision, but we'll see how it turns out in practice. You can help support the project by donating and or contributing. Mwahaha! <laughs> I've enslaved another human to drain his life away. Don't be like me. Get pistol before your life gets drained away. <laughs>